Hi, welcome to the unboxing and preview video of the OCZ Revo Drive 3 X2 Solid State Drive for Boydo's Tech Talk. If you've been following the blog, you would know that I'm uh, rather excited to get my hands on this device. Uh, it's a, a good upgrade for my current solid state drive, which is uh, running close to capacity and uh, has a tendency to slow down a bit as well. So what I'm going to do is this video is going to be a bit different. I'll be unboxing this and I will also be doing uh, a bit of a preview and a benchmark as well, just to show you what sort of performance you can expect from this solid state drive. So let's get straight into the unboxing. As you can see, it's still in a shrink wrap, so I've not opened it, obviously. Unless, of course, I had a shrink wrap um, process nearby, but I'm, but I do not. <coughs> So, so it's not as glossy now, so you might be able to read it there. Uh, so it's a uh, PCI Express Generation 2 uh, X4 card, um, and the box states it's up to three times faster than a SATA 3 6 gigabit per second uh, interface. It also includes the OCZ VCA, that's virtual, uh, Virtualized Controller Architecture 2.0. Uh, that enables uh, trim support and also smart monitoring, something that you can't get on um, RAID solutions for solid state drives. And VCA, so the Superscale Storage Accelerator on, on which VCA runs, that also takes the burden off the CPU. Uh, so the that can um, let's just double check that there. Yeah, the uh, so that accelerator that sits between uh, the PCI Express interface and the four Sandforce SF two two six one controllers on board each with roughly 60 gigabytes of storage connected. And that what that allows uh, this device to do is to present itself as one large drive to the operating system, but also taking care of trim behind the scenes um, well, without having to um, resort to any uh, tomfoolery. So let's open the box. <laughs> Just show you the back. It's nothing too special on the back. You'll notice that uh, this is the 240 gig model right there. So here's the box in the box. Um, now it is quite a strong box, and you can probably see. Now that it's uh, a box in a kind of a sleeve there, but it's quite sturdy, so um, I don't know if you could sit on it, but you probably wouldn't want to given how expensive this bit of kit was, but um, it's quite a sturdy box there. Looking inside the box, um, it's a sticker, my SSD is faster than your hard drive. Uh, for those who like to gloat a bit. Um, now, there's a driver and manual disk. Now, I'm going to be pretty sure that's going to be out of date, so I'll be getting the drivers off the website for that, but the manual is still probably fine. Uh, and inside the box, uh, that's... Oh. There's nothing else in there really, it's just that. I'll just pop that back in over here. So here's the device. Of course it's in anti-static wrap because you don't want it being zapped. So I'll just carefully take it out and we'll have 
a look around the device quickly. So, here is the solid-state drive. Now, one of the first things, if you haven't already noticed, uh, that you may have picked up is this is not like one of your traditional solid-state drives. There's no SATA port on it. Uh, what you have instead is a PCI Express uh, connector here, and this is a 4X or X4 connector, I should say, rather. Uh, going in, uh, we'll look at some of the components of the device here. So under the heatsink over here, uh, under that is the Superscale storage accelerator. Now that takes the load again off the uh, your CPU and uh, brings the processing directly on the card for uh, ordering an allocation of data across the storage array. So that's a, a very important chip there. Uh, moving across, you'll notice that there are two other prominent chips there. And I'll just see if I can focus in on one of them. Let's try this frame down. No, not going to do it. Oh, nearly. There we go. Sandforce 2281. So there's two of those. Uh, so per card, and you'll see that there's actually two cards there. Uh, so per card, there's two of those Sandforce SF2261 controllers. And uh, hooked up to each of those is 60 gigabytes of uh, NAND uh, flash memory. Now the configuration of that is uh, there's 12 on the front of the card or the back depending which way you want to look. And um, even though I'm showing you the other side um, of the other card, there's four on the back. So that makes for a total of 16 NAND uh, modules per card, and each of those would be roughly 8 gigabytes. So that packs quite quite a bit of storage on a limited area there. Now you may notice that there are um, empty banks there, so you would fill up the rest of those for higher storage capacities um, on the card. So given that there's a uh, 12 blank there and um, on here there's 4. If you wanted to get a 480 gig model you would get, uh, you would just simply fill up the rest of those with 8 gig NAND modules um, and uh, if you wanted the 960 model you would use uh, 16 gig modules and fill up all the banks as well. Uh, now this drive uh, can be set as a bootable uh, drive. Um, now, one, one common concern is, you know, you have to load drivers during the Windows installation. Now, this is not something new. If you have had uh, SCSI uh, drives in the past, you've had to do it. Um, in the old Windows installs, you've had to hit, uh, hit F6 uh, to load your drivers. Uh, these days, with Windows Vista and Windows 7, it's um, a bit friendly and can load stuff off, uh, load your drivers off. A USB stick instead of a floppy drive. Um, there we go. Um, so what I will do is uh, through the magic of YouTube, I will um, install this little puppy and uh, get Windows installed and I'll show you just how this can perform. Uh, before I do, I'll just mention that this uh, SSD is rated for uh, 1,500 megabytes per second read, that's megabytes, not megabits, and 1,200 megabytes per second write. But we'll see exactly under what sort of circumstances you'll attain those speeds. So, see you on the other side.
just before we get to the benchmarks, I just wanted to show you the configuration of the desktop that I'm using. Uh, so this is uh, an Intel i7 platform using a Gigabyte EX58 Extreme motherboard and it has uh, 12 gig of RAM installed here. Uh, I have the OCZ Revo Drive 3X2 solid state drive installed here in the orange X4 PCI Express slot. There's an empty X1 PCI Express slot. I have two GTX 295 video cards installed here in SLI. Uh, or quad SLI because each card has two GPUs there. They're both in uh, an X16 slot each and over the back there is uh, a, a PCI Express X8 slot. However, that gets disabled when you're using the second X16 slot currently used by uh, this LedTech branded uh, video card here. Also, I have a Blu-ray burner which is installed there and this is just the front there, it's an LG. Uh, I also have a Patriot, can't quite see it there, but in there is a Patriot 128 gig uh, solid state drive which uh, is being replaced by the uh, Revo drive and I also have a uh, 1.5 terabyte hard disk drive as well. So We'll get straight to the benchmarks. Okay, so just to uh, verify that I've got the right drive installed and uh, we've got the right drive for the benchmarks, um, I've just got the OCZ Technology Toolbox here, just confirming that I have the Revo Drive 3x2 installed, uh, 240 gigabytes, so that is correct. And uh, just to um, confirm that uh, I've got the right drive letter, I have uh, H drive here. Uh, so basically 240 gig translates to 223 um, in Windows. So that's what we've got there. So what I will do here is I will choose the H drive. And I will leave all of the other parameters here. And this is um, the Atto Disk Benchmark uh, tool that I'm using here. So let's just kick that off. Okay, so that's going to go now. Now, with any sort of drive, um, not just solid state drives, but hard drives, uh, you will get better read and write performance with larger files. Uh, smaller files tend to have um, more overhead when you're dealing with them and they will decrease your overall performance. But we can see here, I've already started at uh, 0 0.5 and we've got a write of 8 megabytes a second there and a read of 7. You just see that going up, so we're up to 67 megabytes per second write, 62 read. Now, of course, this isn't taking into account that there's um, 1,024 units per um, next higher up unit. So I'm just using 1,000 as a generalization here. So we've got 16 here. We're up to 257 write, 229 read, 32. We've got 450, 430, 64 is 608, 640, 128, 935, and 1024. So that's just going over the gigabyte. 256 is 1.171, right? 1.431 read, 512, 1.129 write, 1.539 read. So I th I'm, I'm thinking this is megabyte chunks now. So 1.198 write, 1.586 read, 
2 megabyte chunk, 1.167 write, 1.602 read. So you can just see that that's absolutely phenomenal. And um, we've got the um, highest transfer size there. Alright, so we've ended up with the um, 8192 there. It's 1.296 write and 1.606 read and those last two results there were quite well, they're exactly the same. So that's that's how much power you've got packed into that solid state drive there. Um, so the box doesn't necessarily lie, but you will see better performance for larger um, transfer sizes there. So um, anyway, that's the end of the unboxing and preview. Um, if you've uh, enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Um, if you've got any questions, make sure you leave a comment at the bottom and I'll endeavour to answer them. Um, and as always, thanks for watching.